so what kind of things what kind of white collar crimes like you know you may have come across accounting fraud everyone knows example of this okay? satyam computers was an accounting fraud right so they had the statements they had financial statements which were completely misrepresenting the financial position of the company right nirav modi scam no more of a systematic fraud but satyam was a proper accounting fraud okay because the financial statements of the company were puffed up like anything they were completely misrepresenting the real position enron that was an accounting fraud and it was an accounting fraud to the extent that it it was an accounting and auditing fraud rather okay it was a kind of a collusion it was so much huge of a fraud that it brought one whole accounting firm around the globe it used to be one of the big five firms after kpmg in ernst and young deloitte and pwc okay there was a firm called arthur anderson okay it was like a big five firm that's where it was and it brought like you know being with and lord brought that firm down to nowhere to be seen now like gone completely so accounting frauds auditing frauds can be uh, you know one example of white collar crimes embezzlement what is embezzlement so you kind of uh, use the funds which were meant meant for something else for your own purpose okay and i remember reading about one case here that uh, you know in a bank and these kinds of things the kind of turn up uh, in bfis a lot because that's where the maximum money is moving isn't it like a lot of money is moving day in and day out in bfis sectors so that's where these kinds of things happen so embezzlement so uh, this guy like i i don't remember the case i don't remember what it was and this was kind of like years back but he the way he did is that he uh, manipulated the bank's system in such a manner so that every transaction that happens every transaction that happens a very small amount okay gets transferred to his account so let's say in 10000 rupees transaction that is happening okay 50 paise will be transferred to that is account okay so this kind of thing he did but he did this for every transaction that happens in the bank so just think of it like in a bank how many transactions happen okay in every transaction even 50 paise gets deposited to somebody's account over a period of time that's like millions okay so this is what like you know embezzlement is and that's why like whenever you have processes where you have banks which are really really alert okay uh, and which are really sharp and i have i have not seen this happen in india like you know uh, thankfully but while i was out of india one sunday evening we got two calls from her bank okay back to back two calls sunday evening just think of this two calls back to back from her bank and they are telling us that there have been two transactions on your account which are in the range of like very small 5 uh, euro 10 euro kind of transactions but it has gone to a gaming site which is not in your usual pattern of spending or which is not in your usual pattern of transfers okay so like you know that is uh, that is a thing that uh, immediately it took their attention and immediately they had a look and immediately they called on a sunday evening to say that this is happening okay so just think of where you could have given your card details or to someone it, it was through a card right so where you could have given your card details to someone so that this kind of thing is happening or are these transactions by you okay so immediately there were two transactions and immediately there was a call us and we said that yes these are not by us okay and immediately the card was blocked everything got stopped in the account after that but this is the kind of alertness 
which uh, is required. Just think of this, like, you know, for them to see this, they are seeing that the transaction is happening. They are also very clear that the usual transfers that happen from this account. So, so far, this account that has been held by us, it has never gone to a gaming site. So, it is clearly unusual, right? So, these kinds of situations can happen. And this is where Harshad Mehta comes in, guys. Security is frauds, okay? Ponzi schemes, insider trading, market manipulation, okay? So, wherever you are having schemes like, you know, uh, give, uh, give money and it gets doubled in some period of time because we are investing in securities which make double in some period of time. So that kinds of, uh, you know, schemes, bonsai schemes. Insider trading, it's a crime and it's punishable with a huge amount, okay, under the SEBI Act. It's in crores. SEBI securities, like, you know, crimes, insider trading or like, you know, acquisition related crimes. These are, the penalties are in crores, okay. So insider trading, like it's a huge, uh, thing that happens, market manipulation. Okay, like like you see, you saw, in, you might have seen in that series that there is everyone like you know just lift this this stock. Okay, so everyone will buy the stock all together and they will bring it up to uh, like you know a certain level and then after that they'll make profit by by selling it, right? <laughs> These kinds of things are also white collar crimes. And like in the case of Harshad Mehta, you will see that things can, like, you know, it can result in people losing a lot of money. Tax frauds, evasion, fraudulent schemes. So uh, there is evasion, people set up entities in uh, tax havens. There is a movement in which they like you know you you just move the money basically you create false invoices false documents everything lots of different things and you evade tax through different means fraudulent schemes and i would like to you know there are uh, there there are lots of cases where people will because just think of it not everybody in our country because the tax laws are so complex Okay, it is very difficult for people that they are going to be filing their own returns properly. Okay, if there is even a little bit of degree of complexity in the assets that they are holding or transactions that they are making, then it is very difficult. Like they have, they are going to be using someone who is a chartered accountant or you know who's who knows exactly how to file tax returns. They're going to be taking the help of someone. And then there will be lots of people there who kind of promise people that you're going to get refunds from the taxation department and they literally, the filing of the returns is um, like completely wrong. So these kind of situations, they will new people uh, telling them that that is what is happening. I even know of a case where someone, like even before, you know, this e-filing was there, before this e-filing system was there and you used to manually like, you know, file your income tax returns. Uh, there was someone who actually generated fake refunds from the tax department. Okay. It's very easy that, you know, people lose their money to the tax and they, they file fraudulent returns when they are promised tax and someone else takes the fees and run away. That is thing. But this guy actually duped the department. He duped the income tax department to generate fake refunds. So there have been creatures like this, okay? It's all very uh, interesting and exciting how things happen, okay? When you try to dig up and trace it, it's just amazingly interesting. Money laundering. What is money laundering? Cancel the origin of money or hide it, isn't it? Hide the origin of money and hide it in layers and layers. So you hide it exactly. It takes place in different layers. You hide it in layers and layers so that people don't come to know what is the original source of this money. Okay. It is put in so many places, like it's moved through so many pipes. Okay. And that's the reason why 
you will see, uh, you know, the Companies Act 2013 when it was brought, it has a provision that you can't have more than two layers of investment subsidiaries. Okay, so you can't create pipeline companies, one, two, three, four, five, six layers of pipeline companies to root the money. So that, you know, when it reaches at the end, people don't come to know who's the original owner. Illegal process to show that it come, it has come from a legitimate source. Yes, mostly in small business and slow business, money is hidden. People create fake shops, even photocopy shops and show that it's legitimate, yeah. So you hide the source of money. It's not just to evade tax, but it can be proceeds of crime. Okay, your uh, supari. I don't. I would like. I don't know. People in Bombay might be aware of these words. Okay, you get a supari. Where do you use that money? And you put it in layers and layers and all of that. Okay, and make it legal. So it happens at a very much, of course, much larger level and in uh, huge amounts and all of that. 